welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rudy and thank you so much for being here. And if you are new here and you don't know me, today's video is quite a treat. And by treat, I do mean highly disturbing. <laughs> I have a few personal updates that I wanted to share with you guys, especially relating to my skin, some of the allergies that we've talked about in a past video. So if you are not caught up on kind of what's been going on with my skin the past few months, I will link that video up above, but it's basically just an explanation of kind of the symptoms I had been experiencing from a rash on my face and in the past on my body as well. So I went to the doctor, I have a few answers. I've also been vaccinated since the last time we talked, so I thought we could talk about that as well and kind of shed some light on the process. And I can obviously answer any questions that you guys might have about it to help debunk any myths or anything like that if you have questions. And we're just gonna do a very quick, easy look with some new makeup that I have. I think I wanna use some of my new goodies from Tower 28. I will probably just do a very light coverage look. If you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe. We talk about more than just my rashes on this channel, although it doesn't seem like it recently. We talk about skincare, beauty, mental health. We do vlogs and I would love to have you join. So let's backtrack to February to when I was experiencing this rash. This was the third time in the past year that I had had the rash. And the first time that I had it, my doctor was like, Oh, my dermatologist was like, just assumed it was because of stress because I was going through a stressful time personally. I am going in uh, spot concealing with the Hydro Sealer from Tarte, which is my favorite concealer and probably my favorite coverage product. It was my favorite uh, concealer of 2020 as well if you want to watch my all-time favorites from the last year. Anyways, so I had it last February. She told me she thought it was stress related. Okay, I understood. I understood that because I really was quite stressed at the time. But then it came back again in the summer and I've talked about that in my tretinoin videos. And then it came back again this February. I couldn't find a link attaching these three dates. I couldn't figure out what it was that may have caused it. I thought first I thought it was weather. I had it in the summer and then I had it in the middle of winter. So Unless it's about extreme weather, it's not that. This time that it happened in February, I was not abnormally stressed. Things were fine. So I knew it wasn't that. So I decided to call an allergist and get an allergy test done instead of going back to my dermatologist because I felt like, to be honest, they just weren't giving me the answers that I was hoping for, which I feel is very common. I actually did a poll on my community tab asking how many times people had gone to the dermatologist and left without an answer. And it was a good 70% that said yes, they had left the dermatologist without an answer to their question. And I know that's not necessarily dermatologist's fault, it's just that the skin is a very confusing organ, but I just wanted to take it into my own hands. Okay, I am going to lightly set my under eyes and my chin, any oily areas with this new Kosas powder. This is the Cloud Set and mine is in the shade Feathery, which is a light medium shade. Guys, I am fully loving this. I'm trying not to use the word obsessed because I feel like that is thrown around so often in the beauty space that it's starting to lose its meaning and also, as a mental health advocate, I don't like using the word obsessed. Anyways, this is a pressed powder and it is so light and I mean the title cloud. It helps set those places where you, you know, you might want to because you're oily or because you don't want transfer, but it doesn't add coverage and it doesn't take away any of that dewiness or glow that you might have. It just helps set it. It's a really, really unique formula. So if you want a more in-depth review on this, let me know. But so far I have truly been loving it and I can see it being a summer staple for me very soon. Now going in with the Tarte Cream Bronzer, that's all it's called, in the shade Breezy. No, the Breezy Cream Bronzer in the shade Seashells. This came in a really, really, really good clean beauty set from Sephora. I can pop in a picture. It's still up right now and it has an amazing array of items in it. It has a full-size Ilia blush it had a full-sized Kosas lip fuel, this mini bronzer, I mean, a little um, super goop sunscreen. It was really, really good. I highly recommend you pick it up for $30. And I have been loving this bronzer because it is, it's not a matte bronzer, but it doesn't have any shimmer or glitter whatsoever. So if you saw me talk about the Tower 28 bronzer and this was too 
shimmery for you, try this one out because it is a super natural finish, but it doesn't have any of that shimmer. So it's just gonna look like truly you're bronzed and nothing else. You know what I mean? Like it's a very easy bronzer that you can layer with any type of blush. So I had my allergy appointment a few weeks ago and it was a shocking, shocking revelation. So I walked in, he asked me, you know, so what are you allergic to? Tell me about like what you know about yourself and your allergies and why you're here. Gave him the spiel about my rash and I showed him pictures of it. And he goes, are you, um, are you gluten free by chance? And I was like, yes, I am. I'm gluten free and lactose intolerant. I have a few different autoimmune disorders. So I have um, celiac, I have hypothyroidism. And so he was looking at my chart and he has all my information from my previous doctor. Oh, and I also should mention that back in the first time that I had this rash pop up, it actually happened on my elbows, my arms. It was going down the side of my hip. Like this has popped up a few different times in my life. And when that happened, this was before I had a YouTube channel they actually took a biopsy of the rash and sent it in, my dermatologist did, and it came back inconclusive, of course. So now I have this big scar on my hip from for no reason. But he was looking at the results and he said, well, the results do state that this was definitely about something that you've ingested and not something that was used topically. And I was like, why didn't they ever tell me that? They literally never told me that. Next with my blushes, I'm actually going to watercolor blush. And if you watch Khaki on YouTube, um, she is a blush queen, a cream blush queen. She is a cream blush queen. Wow, that was hard to say. And she likes to use more than one and kind of use them in different areas. And I just love that. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with this darker shade from uh, Tower 28. This is in the shade Power Hour. And I like to use this just a little bit above my bronzer. So he's looking at that and he's saying, yeah, it looks like that was about something you've ingested. And from the looks of the photos, which thank God I had taken photos to show him over the past year, he said, this looks like a celiac rash, which is a rash that someone gets when they come in contact with gluten if they have a severe allergy to gluten. And I was like, oh my God, I would have never ever thought of that in a million years because I just assumed it was from something that I was using. I never thought it was something that I was eating, which I have been gluten-free for five, probably five years at this point, but my husband is not gluten-free. So we run into the issue of sharing a kitchen, sharing uh, you know, a toaster. The shared space situation could be what's triggering this rash every couple months. So that was a revelation all on its own. And then he said, well, let's go ahead and do a prick test on your back just to see what else you might be dealing with because I am allergic to kiwis and there's a bunch of other food that you could be allergic to. If kiwis pops up, let's just do a patch test. And I said, okay, I'm here. We might as well do it. Next, I'm gonna go in with another Tower 28 blush. I just like to use these together. This is in the shade Rush Hour. They actually sent me this one recently. I was shocked when they reached out to me, but I think it's because I obsessively talk about them. And so they were like, let's just send this girl some stuff because she's clearly obsessed. <laughs> and this is in the shade Rush Hour. It's a nice peachy coral shade compared to their other shade that's similar in Magic Hour. This is more of a muted nude. This is definitely a bright, brighter coral. And you only need literally the tiniest bit of these to make them go very far. So I kind of like to pat them on my hand first. I know a lot of people use these with their fingers, but I prefer to use a brush just because I feel like I get a thinner application and more control over where they go. And I don't have any problems using them with a brush. So that's my recommendation for them. So anyway, so the nurse comes in and she's like, we're doing 45 pricks on your back, which I was like, okay, turn around. I'm gonna prick you and then I'll come back in 15 minutes to see what the results are. And I'm like, okay. And so she's pricking my back. It doesn't hurt terribly, but it hurts enough. You know, I'm like, oh, okay. That's a little uncomfortable, but whatever. Not even close to the worst part of it. So she leaves and in my head, I'm like, she's about to leave. <laughs> she's literally about to leave. What if I have an explosion, which I had to sign a release that said, if I died, that's okay, basically. <laughs> and I was like, well, certainly they're pricking me with all of these things that I just assumed everyone was allergic to. They're pricking me with pollen, mold, dust. They're pricking me with birch tree, oak tree, mugwort, which we'll get to. All of the ragwood, all of these different types of trees that create different fruits. So like a birch tree creates like strawberries, peaches, plums, blueberries, blackberries, 
this might not be accurate, but you get the gist. And so he wanted to test me because a kiwi comes from that line. And so anyways, I get the prick. Also side note, I am going in with a new sample of a product. This is the Say Beauty Glowy Super Gel in the shade Star Glow. I am planning on picking up a full size of this at the Sephora sale, which is coming up. I'm going to do a video about what's in my cart so we can kind of go over it if you guys have any suggestions or questions but i do have this in my cart because i'm really enjoying it it's basically a really really thin gel that has no glitter at all it's just shimmer and i think is easier to mix in with your foundations easier than the charlotte tilbury similar vibes but this is much thinner and feels more like a skincare product than a makeup product. I've been using this on days where I've not been doing much with my complexion and it just looks very beautiful and very natural. And I just use my fingers. So anyways, she pricks me. I'm sitting there. I'm going to start putting photos in. So I just want to warn you if you have, ugh, I can never say it, trypophobia. I'll put it on the screen. Triphobia, tri the one where you don't like looking at holes, like a lot of dots or holes or anything like that, I would fast forward this because I have a bunch of dots on my back and they are very, very upset. <laughs> Within like 30 seconds, I was like, wow, I don't feel so good. This is really uncomfortable. This is really itchy. Certainly everyone has this reaction though, right? I mean, we're talking ragweed. We're talking all these different types of pollen. I mean, everyone has allergies, right? Wrong. I'm sitting there. It's getting worse by the second. I feel like I want to rip my back off. It is so itchy. I go back and take a picture again. It's double the size that it was. I mean, it's just growing by the second. This is a random find that I saw recently in my collection. This is the Brilliant Eye Brightener in Stella from Thrive Cosmetics. I think I've got this in a in a past FabFitFun, which speaking of, I just uploaded a video roasting FabFitFun because I ended up canceling my membership. So if you are feeling bad about your FabFitFun spring box, go watch that because it'll give you a chuckle. Anyways, so she, the nurse comes back in after like 10 minutes and she goes, Whoa! You're blown up like a Christmas tree. And I was like, yeah, isn't that normal? Like, doesn't everyone kind of blow up? And she said, no, I've had five people in here today and you're the only one that's had any reaction to these. I was like, what? She said, yeah, only about 30% of people in the world have allergies. I'm so lucky to be in that 30%. So she goes, okay, I'll come back in 10 minutes or, you know, whatever. She comes back in. I'm going in with the Voluminous Lash Paradise from L'Oreal on my lashes. Sorry, I gotta bring this mirror a little bit closer. And she goes, I know this is uncomfortable. I'm going to measure the size of these, you know, warts, <laughs> these giant dots to see how far they spread. And then I will spray you down with Benadryl so it helps the itching and the pain. And I was like, okay, sure, I'm, I'm feeling so itchy, I literally wanna jump out of my skin. So she measures them, she sprays the Benadryl and it helps pretty much immediately, although I was still quite itchy. The allergist comes back in and he says, well, you are in the 80th percentile for allergies. You really, you don't have a reaction to any of these fruits. He starts listing off all these fruits I eat all the time. Apples, pears, plums, peaches, bananas. You don't have any reaction to those? And I was like, no, I don't think so. And he's like, huh, okay, well, you are severely allergic to birch and to oak. And so kind of don't be surprised in the future when some of those allergies from foods may start to pop up, which I've recently learned my dad is very allergic to a lot of food as well. And so that was a bummer. And if you don't know how allergy works in that way, basically it's the allergy to food comes from where it was actually grown. So People who are allergic to apples are allergic to birch trees, if that makes sense. So I haven't had any reactions to that yet. And he basically was like, okay, so gave me this huge amount of paperwork that shows me what I'm allergic to and how to deal with it. Obviously I'm allergic to cats and dogs, which I knew. Severely allergic to oak, birch, somehow not allergic to mold. So that's nice, I guess. <laughs> and sent me on my way and basically said, start taking a Zyrtec every day of your life buy Flonase, and if it doesn't get better, basically in life, then to come back in and get allergy shots for my life, which is not something that I want to do, was a little bit scary when it happened. So I went home, back all red, came home to read. He 
he was like, holy shit, I can't believe this. And so since then, I've basically just been trying to figure out how to how to help this situation. I'm a little bit confused because now it's like a twofold thing where I'm dealing with this celiac part of myself and I'm dealing with the, you know, regular allergy part of myself. They they connect in some ways and in others they don't. And it's just a lot to, to take care of on top of the fact that I have thyroid issues and it was just a lot at once. Okay, next for my eyebrows, I'm just going to use NYX The Brow Glue. I've really been liking this. I think even more than the Anastasia, to be honest, and it is about half the price. It's just a really nice brow glue and I prefer it so much more than the clear Glossier brow glue or brow gel because it's actually white. This one is actually clear, which I think is kind of the, the deal to get it to work. So anyways, I'm working through that now. If you guys have been through anything like that in your life, I would love to hear from you how you deal with it. I am on the Zyrtec train. I hate the fact that I have to take more medication every single day. I have my Flonase ready and I'm hoping that I will see an, in, an you know increase in my quality of life after this. And I'm glad that I have a few answers, although the rash situation I'm certain is going to come back in my life again. And it's just something that I, I'm going to need to learn to deal with, especially knowing that it could be from celiac and the way that I interact in restaurants and all of that. It just, it is a lot of information to have at once about yourself when you're already like, ugh feeling bad about your health. So that is my answer to you on my rash <laughs> and it is kind of nice knowing that it's not because of something I was using topically, but you know me, I'm still incredibly sensitive and my routine is super, super minimal. So I'm gonna keep it that way. And lastly, I wanted to tell you that my husband and I got our first dose of the vaccine this week. For lips, I am going in with a newish product. Also, this was sent to me in PR because of my TikTok page. This is the Lana Lips Lip Watercolor. And this is in the shade Watermelon. And I didn't think I would like it because it's quite bright, but it is very, very thin, which is why they're called Lip Waters. And it just adds a little bit of gloss to your lips without being too much. And I really like the applicator. So we uh, live in Tennessee. You guys know I live in Nashville. And so in my actual county, I'm not eligible to get the vaccine because we are in stage or phase 1C, which means you have to be 16 and older and have a chronic disease like hypertension, high blood pressure, things like that, or you have to work as an essential worker. So we don't qualify in our county. However, our state, a lot of people are in a rural community who do not want to get the vaccine. And that's just the way it is. I personally am very much for people getting the vaccine, but we can't force people to do it. So in the surrounding counties of mine, people of any age are allowed to get the vaccine because they have a lot of them. They have leftovers and they don't want them to go to waste. So we were able to sign up in a county about 35 minutes north of us. And so we went on Thursday and got our first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. It was super duper easy. We basically had a drive through situation where we drove, there was about a hundred other cars there, told them it was our first dose. They gave us this big paperwork of information just to read and be aware of. There's also an app that you can sign up for post vaccine to keep track of your symptoms. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more bronzer, by the way, now that we're here. I always end up doing that, adding a little bit more on my cheeks after the look is over. We drove through, it took about an hour, maybe an hour and a half because there was a lot of people there. Got it in my left arm, Reed got it in his left arm. You have to sit for 15 minutes afterwards just to make sure that you don't have a, an allergic reaction, which LOL, this whole video is about allergies. So part of me was a little bit scared. No reaction, we left, went home, and now we're two days later. So I think if I could give any advice around the vaccine, it would be to move your arm like crazy after you get it. If you can have someone else drive you so that you can move your arm the entire way home, like a freaking chicken, like literally like, like move it like so much because the first hour it doesn't hurt, you know, the first hour that you have the shot, you don't feel anything. So you really wanna move it around to get it kind of going throughout your arm to help with the muscle pain that comes in the next few days which did happen for us, I would say. By that evening, both of our arms were sore and then all day yesterday, it was very sore, kind of like when you get the flu shot. And today, nothing, I feel great. So as long as you move it around, really get your muscles moving so that you don't have it just sitting in one spot, it'll help a lot. 
and I did not have any symptoms beyond that. I didn't get sick at all, neither did my husband. We felt completely fine. And for reference, neither of us ever had COVID. So I know that it kind of changes depending on if you've had it or not, but we never had it. With Pfizer, your in-between time is three weeks and with Moderna, it's four weeks. So we're going back in three weeks to get our second vaccine and I am so thrilled about it. Again, I am happy to answer any questions that you guys have on the process or anything that you might be worried about. I am here to talk to you. And if you have any tips for me on being someone with severe allergies for the rest of my life and not knowing it for the last 27 years, I would love to hear from you. I know that you guys always come in with the best advice because most of you are sensitive skinned and skin sensitive bodied just like me. I've got some really, really fun videos coming up. I'm going to do an entire breakdown on my hair because I feel like that is the question I get the most is how I do my hair or how I maintain or take care of my hair. And I am really excited to dive into that. I might have to make it like a two or three part series because I have so much to talk about, but I'm gonna try and fit it into one video. We're also gonna talk about my 18 month update on tretinoin and talk about kind of the transition from winter to spring to summer skincare because it changes a lot for me. So I will see you guys in the next video really, really soon. Bye.